So it was quite a while ago in my younger days, let's say, that I went on a backpacking trip. We went way out into the wilderness. We were out there about four days. There were six of us. It's the last night of the backpacking trip. We had carried all our food the whole time. In fact, our dog went with us, and we made her a little bait backpack. She had to carry her own food. On the last night of the trip, we were dirty, we were tired, we were hungry. Ann Lee was cooking dinner. It was her turn. She was cooking it over the fire, and all we had left to eat was some pasta. So we were just, we were, we were so hungry, we were practically drooling. We'd been walking all day, and this is all we had to eat. So it got cooked, and Annie went to pour the pasta into the strainer, and it tipped over. And it went all in the dirt. You have never seen six women dive into the dirt so fast. And we started complaining. What are you doing, Ann Lee? This is all we have to eat. We have nothing more. We're so hungry. We scooped it up. We rinsed it off. Threw a little dog food in there. Just kidding. But we complained. Now it was cold and it was gritty. We were so worried we wouldn't have enough. Oh my gosh, for one evening that we wouldn't have enough. Of course, a little later in the evening, our friend Karen did admit she had four granola bars stacked away in her backpack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were out in the wilderness by choice, right? We were having a great time until that moment, backpacking, enjoying ourselves. When you heard about the story today, the people in the wilderness, they weren't out there by choice. They had fled. How many of you have seen on TV some of the Syrian refugees fleeing their land? Okay? That's what it was like. They were not on a backpacking trip. They were fleeing a violent situation. All they owned on their backs, and they were out there in the wilderness. And that wilderness is a little different than the Sierra wilderness a dry wilderness. And so what happened? They were hungry. And when they got hungry, what happens when you get really, really hungry? Cranky. How many people get cranky when they get hungry? Yeah. Parents and children, right? They were grouchy. They were complaining and they started to whine. They started to whine to their leader. Maybe it sounded like this. You brought us out here to die in the wilderness? Or maybe it sounded like this. I can't believe you brought us out here in the wilderness. Or maybe it was Huh, you don't know any better. They were hungry. But you know what? The story says that God understood. God understood that when you're hungry, sometimes you get cranky and sometimes you complain. So God said, all right, in the story, he said, I'll rain down bread from heaven. I don't mean like bread like this from heaven. So what God did was each morning, like the dew, there was this white, flaky substance on the ground. It's called manna. You know why it's called manna? Because in Hebrew, manna means, what is it? <laughs> so the food was called, what is it? And they scooped it up. And the story says that when they scooped it up, they each had enough. In fact, the rabbis over the centuries have said, when they scooped it up and they cooked it, that the manna, that what is it, this substance that they had never seen, it tasted exactly like whatever they imagined it to be. So it probably tasted like a milkshake or french fries or broccoli, you never know. But here's the special part. You with me kids? 
here's the special part. I think that God was trying to teach the people a very important lesson. Because here's what God said. Gather only as much as you need for that day. Gather only as much as you need and your family needs for that day. It was enough for everyone. In fact, if they gathered too much, it would spoil. Because God was trying to teach them a very important lesson. Only take what you need. Now, I imagine that most of us in this room, if we went home and looked in our refrigerator right now, is there only what we need for today? Because we don't really live like that, do we? But how many of you, I know I'm guilty, very guilty of this, Sometimes, you know what, I have so much in my refrigerator and I open the refrigerator door and I just think, sometimes I've even said it out loud, oh, there's nothing to eat. <laughs> wow. I think, I think I've gotten used to having so much. Maybe I don't appreciate what I have. Maybe I don't even, I don't know, maybe I have a love affair with more. Maybe wanting more is just part of our culture so much. Who has an iPhone 4? <laughs> One brave soul. Is an iPhone 4 enough? <laughs> wanting more wow how many people think that wanting more always wanting more is a problem in our culture <laughs> so maybe the question really is maybe it's two questions one what is enough it's a great question. And sometimes I don't think that we might even know what is enough anymore. And what is fair? How many people believe in fairness? Okay, so we're gonna do one thing. Today is World Communion Sunday. That means people are sharing a meal like this all across the world. Christians all across the world in different ways with different breads. When you come up for communion, you'll see there's pita, there's lavash, there's challah, there's tortilla, there's chapatis. All different kinds of bread. But on this table, if there were only a hundred people in the world, like we read the poem about, if there were only a hundred people in the world, this is how this communion table would look. All right, so if you received your number, those of you, it's not everybody received it, if you have a number, if you have a number from 1 to 12, would you please stand? So you would be served this. Jolene, how many pieces of bread are there around there about? About 40. About 40 pieces for these 12 people. Is that enough? Yes. Okay. All right, you may be seated. If you have numbers 13 to 45, would you please stand? All right, you would be served this plate. Dakota, how many are on there? 24. 24. All right, look around. Look around. Is that enough? <laughs> Not quite? All right. Thank you. Now, you may be seated. If you have numbers 46 to 50, would you please stand? Okay. Let's see. How many pieces, Jorge? 100. 100 pieces. Is that enough? And that Is it more than enough? Yes. Hmm. Okay, if you... So it looks like Claire and Michelle, who had the other people, who were the other two people? Dakota and Lee and Bill. It looks like you're going to have a lot of Jesus, because that's a big, that's a big plate of bread. You're going to have a lot of food. All right. Now, if you have numbers 51 to 100, would you stand? OK. 
Okay, look around. Okay, Patrick? How many pieces on the plate? Four. <laughs> Four. Is that enough? No. All right, let's have a seat. So let me ask the children or youth in the room. Is this the kind of communion that we do every week? Do, do we have 50 people lined up on this side and they only get four pieces of bread between all 50? Is that what happens? No. Or do we say, oh, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm sorry, you're number six. We're out. We're out of bread. <laughs> do we say to the other five people that stood up that have this whole thing, do we say, take a whole handful, it doesn't matter about anyone else? <laughs> Is that the kind of table that you think God wants us to have? Huh? Okay, so if we don't have that, then why do we settle for a world or a society where just a few people get a lot and a whole bunch of people get a little? Is that fair? What do you think we should do? Some, some, some child raised their hand. Yep, you, I'm looking at you. You should share, okay. That's a great idea. So Jorge, maybe put a little, maybe you should share with Patrick, what do you think? <laughs> Come on, Jorge. I'm very happy, but. <laughs> All right, all right. And you know what? Here's the truth. In God's economy, if we actually lived more like God invites us to live, you know what? There's enough for every single person. No one in this world goes hungry because there's not enough food. People in the world go hungry because some people have a lot more than others and we have not learned what we were supposed to learn in kindergarten, sharing. God is a God of fairness and justice and it is up to us as God's people to make sure our world looks a lot more like God's table. Amen. 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 Let's sing together. We are the body of Christ. Mm -hmm.